Welcome back everyone to the video tutorial World Creation Environment Concert Art with 3D Matte Painting Techniques. I went back into uh, 3ds Max to render some elements because I noticed it would be kind of nice to add some additional shields on the ground of the bridge. So what I did is I took my uh, shield uh, which uh, I uh, built for uh, the scattering for the initial shot and I just imported it into a new scene and I'm putting in a V-Ray area light and I'm just placing um, uh, some, you know, the, the copies of the shield in the same kind of, uh, um, in the same scene and just rotating them in a random way so I know I can, you know, sample them later for painting and Photoshop. And now I'm gonna work a bit more on the materials than I did in the initial, uh, in the initial scene. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a V-Ray uh, material and play a bit with the reflection values, um, make it uh, metal uh, look like for the uh, for the uh, spheres that are on the shield itself. And uh, I was thinking for the uh, for the shield itself, it would be nice if it's kind of a leather you know a leather cover on top of um, probably some wood. So uh, I'm uh, using uh, you know very simple uh, brownish material with a bit of spec. Uh, and uh, put a cellular noise into the into the bump slot, and uh, trying to find the right scale for this uh, bump size, and uh, but just trying to keep it very much in the distance, and then just with a face selection, I'm applying another metal material with a bit of texturing, and because I don't have even UVs, I just apply a quick UV um, box mapping uh, to make it to make it work, and I'm also adjusting. The shader, obviously, to make it uh, look good. Uh, I'm putting in the the uh, metal texture I use for the diffuse, also in the reflection, and I'm uh, modifying the output curves a bit to make it a bit more crunchy. Also, uh, I notice it's quite uh, you know I see a lot of polygons, so I put a turbo smooth modifier on top to make this uh, look a bit better. And I'm also modifying my render settings a bit, pushing in a bit of uh, reflection with an HDRI and uh, with a dome light so I get some actual uh, visible reflections in the in the in the metal part and it's not really important what we're going to see in uh, in, uh, in these reflections it's pretty much just that it's not pure black in in, in those and also the leather seems to be very uh, uh, very um, clean so I'm just throwing one of the dirt textures actually I use for the texturing in Photoshop on top and you know multiply it on top so it gets a bit darker. And I'm grading my environment you know environment in the HDR the HDRI I'm using in my in my um, dome light a bit more uh, greenish so it actually matches the lighting of my of my main scene a bit better. And as you can see now uh, I, I get a you know pretty decent result. I'm still adjusting the bump map a bit but uh, that's pretty much it and it's not too fancy and now I'm just duplicating my uh, my shield four times three times and I just you know uh, make sure that they don't cast shadows on each other and put in the final render resolution and I get the same shield out of different light angles one is in shadow one is facing the light one is just you know plain on top and um, pushing it a bit more green but that's not too important because I can grade that anyway but uh, this will actually help me uh, a lot um, and I just want to use this as an example for uh, doing very specific 3D renders to use as images in your um, in your 3D scene because that's for me the the main purpose of going into a 3D program to gener generate an image I can't find anywhere else because I, if I would be able to find an image of exactly the same thing online somewhere or I can shoot it by myself I would do it but uh, because uh, these things usually don't exist or I can't find one that actually matches the same light direction or has the same design as I want, I'm going quickly into 3D and as you can see I'm just, you know, sampling those, modifying them in, in scale and perspective a tiny bit, make a, make a, a black uh, version out of it and, and draw a little shadow for the shields and uh, they look pretty good and I'm also replacing some of the shears I already had in my base render because I thought they did not look so nice. So I just, you know, trying to improve them everywhere I can. 
But this is really one of, you know, we only did one render and we can now use this one render for populating the entire scene without uh, without running into trouble and uh, at all. And that's uh, that's a you know, very clever way, I think, to uh, to work with uh, CG renders. You just go in there and, uh, and, 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 and basically generate the images you can't find somewhere else. And uh, make sure, again, look at them black and white, monochrome, make sure the values are matching, make sure the colors are matching, and then they pretty much fall into place uh, and, 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 they, and they work. So I'm just, you know, making a shadow and blurring them a bit so they are a bit softer and and uh, they work uh, pretty good by default. So I'm just selecting uh, the, the shields that I think work best with the existing light direction and sometimes I flip them, sometimes I, I just use them as they are and uh, usually they work uh, pretty well. So always think about the light direction, obviously. You don't want to put in some element with a totally wrong light direction, which is obviously always a danger if you add, do something like that or add a picture or whatever, uh, that you break the consistency of light direction. And um, you could, you, we could have done that for a bunch of elements actually, for the, for the, for the, for some of the other armory as well, or even for the rocks. You know, just do one nice high-res uh, bit of, you know, rock slide and you know, in CG and put it on top. But why would we? Because we can't, we can find stuff like that on, you know, online as an image, or we can, you know, make a brush, and our we are faster. So we're not doing this because we want to do this in 3D. We're doing this because we. Uh, we want to, you know, it has a purpose, and the main purpose, not using a, a shield, uh, you know, from an image right now, was I can, you know, get different lights, you know, directions, different perspectives, and use them to populate the entire scene. Uh, here I'm now uh, painting a few, uh, a few uh, vines in there, and uh, so I'm already now into the next step. I'm, I'm breaking the. Uh, I'm not texturing anymore. I'm breaking the geometry. I don't care about the the um, the masks anymore because I know, okay, I have the textures into place. It's it's already looking good. It's now really about the the last 10%. I'm throwing in the detail where it's where it's needed, and which means also to to change the geometry, to break it up more, to make it look more natural. And um, so I'm putting in another flag here, and I want to play it really, really dark against that uh, against that uh, lighter haze background. So again, think about the think about the you know contrast, white against dark, uh, dark against uh, bright. And uh, as I mentioned in the previous tutorial as well, uh, I was thinking about this, you know how this whole place was constructed, and um, it's very hard to believe that you could build something like that from scratch. So I was all the time thinking, of, you know, how how this natural environment looked like and how this these pillars were carved out of the rock. So I found this image where, you know, we have kind of a corner with a in a in a in a, in a rock side, and I used that to pretty much make a transition from the pillar into natural rock. And obviously, we don't want to lose the the entire detail on the rock, so. Um, what I'm trying to do very carefully is to find, uh, you know, uh, natural structures in the rock image here where I can blend it with the um, with the uh, with the pillar and the structures I have on the pillar. And while I'm working on this, uh, as well as I'm 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 starting to to break up the uh, the the cleanness of the uh, of the entire uh, in, of the entire thing as well. Also, again, using here the the mask to bring the vines on top of my my element, obviously drawing in shadows and stuff like that, and um, this is quite important. So I know this is going to be really really dark, but uh, it's my chance to to give this environment just a tiny bit more of a story to uh, to get an idea across. Probably we don't even know, you know, nobody will know in the end. But I, you know, I thought about it, so um, I think that's important. So I'm trying to to get this brick structure showing through, also in the transition into the rock. So I know it's uh, you know some probably some bricks were fallen out or whatever. It's um it looks it looks darker. And uh, 
I'm, I'm, I'm painting in some cracks and make it more and more look natural because that's not what we're going to do. We break up the surfaces. Um, and in this case it's very simple because it does not supposed to look new. It's very old. It's basically a ruined place. So you can, you actually can't go too far on this kind of work. You, um, you can you know, adjust every edge you, you want to do. And we could do that, but we don't have to because, as you see, I only do it, you know, in a very few places where you actually see it, where you see a dark edge against the bright surface, or you have an, you know, an outline that is showing up. So uh, I noticed obviously before already that a few of the vines are very, um, very uh, have a very straight angles and look very CG and not very natural. So I'm now going in of fixing that, but I don't want to go too far yet because I I know I can adjust that later, and I don't know if I'm gonna happy with the haze level between the foreground and the midground. So I'm not gonna do too much on this stuff yet, uh, and I can always go back because this is really, uh, you know, one of the last uh, stuff I I wanna I wanna address. So I'd rather spend more time on the on the transition of the of the rock into the into the pillar, uh, and um, breaking up more stuff, and, and 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 I'm trying also to give it a you know perspective and and um, and again story you know make it look cool. That's uh, that's a fact. So I'm I'm trying to you know give it a, a bit of 3D, a bit of a highlight, a bit of a shadow side, these edges as well, so I don't don't feel purely flat as well. Other than that, they're just a broken up line. Uh, so you wanna, you know, make them read in various ways as well. And again, you know, the, the very dark shadow of the vines and I'm just gonna break it up um, where you see it. And always, I'm always switching back and forth between uh, between uh, uh, the what I had before, what I just painted, to see if I improved. Because if I didn't improve and my, my previous image was better or the base render was better, there is no point of, you know, doing that. So I need to go back and adjust and rethink. So I felt that this pillar was uh, quite um, clean, so I went back quickly with some, some masking uh, to, to change that. It's pretty much some of the last elements I want to do. And I thought it might be nice to add an additional flag in this area as well. Uh, it's quite important these flags. You, they feel like a, you know one added detail, but they really um, work. They have to work with the composition. So we don't want to make them too big. We don't want to make them too um, into a wrong direction because they could actually really uh, change the, uh, the the whole composition of the image. So we have to be careful with that. So again, I just draw this stuff from, from scratch because that's the only way I can get this. Obviously, I could look for an image online, but um, this this way is obviously much faster. And uh, this gonna this one is going to disappear in the fog anyway because it's right in the beam of light. And uh, trying to make it look aged as well in a natural way, which is sometimes quite hard, actually. So I'm uh, erasing a lot on this one. And now I'm really detailing uh, this stuff a lot, so adding a lot of additional vines and painting a lot. And while I'm zoomed in, I just, you know, as you may notice, I jump from, from area to area. I add detail where I notice I, I need something. So I just noticed that I never added something to the, to the back part of, the, of the, the crossing bridge. So I quickly take my uh, beloved rock slide images and put them into place grade them and I know they're gonna gonna almost disappear in the in the haze but probably you would miss it or would look too empty if nothing is there so I just want to make sure it's it's there and that's probably you know really something I would do in the very last step um, if you are under time pressure because probably nobody will notice except you of course but then on the other hand you wanna you wanna make a pleasing image for you as well right um, so it's the same deal as always, you know, you put it in there, grade it, um, I just duplicated it quickly, put it in there as well. Again, the haze is so strong, you you only see shapes, you only see highlights, maybe a bit of a breakup, 
that's all you have. The other stuff is uh, pretty much disappearing. And from time to time, I'm always flipping the image just to get a new, new idea here. And these pillars in the background feel very clean and very CG, uh, so I break them up a touch, just to, um, just to uh, don't I don't want to forget them. That's that's all. So uh, I run another weathering pass on top of the entire painting right now. Just you know, every time I notice something, I will I'm trying to add it. And also this area with uh, where the ground was uh, showing through, I'm just going to add a lot of thick atmosphere and fog on top of it because I don't want to see that. And now I'm trying something because I had this, you know, idea maybe I I need a, another light source to add visual interest. So I tried to uh, to put in, you know, kind of a reddish lava glow haze from underneath and uh, Actually, it, you know, it, it was not bad. I mean, it could have, you know, been interesting, and I totally could have done that. But um, but then I decided I I don't want to go with it. The 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 result I have looks good. It looks pleasingly, and we don't want to necessarily um, overpower uh, the story with the lighting. So I want to make the audience focus on the throne, on the on the on the battlefield, on the bridge, and on the vines, on the little details, and the light source from the bottom would totally catch the attention, especially because of the color contrast. So in the end I abandoned that idea. But, f you know, you have to try stuff like that, otherwise you can't you can't tell. So uh, before you, uh, you know, you, you don't explore it, you don't know, usually. So we're thinking more about this environment and uh, because of all that fog, you know, it's supposed to be quite humid, I guess. So I came up with the idea it would be nice to have some puddles in uh, in between those those vines on the floor. So I quickly took the lasso tool and draw some uh, draw some puddles in there, and uh, also had a texture I used for a bit of um, texture in there and uh, grate them into place. Just to add a bit of, uh, you know, um, more visual interest in this ground because otherwise it's just rock, and uh, and, and and ground. And obviously, you also you want to make these things play with the perspective, uh, because you don't want to go too crazy on them. And here I'm just using the, you know, the uh, the entire image for reflection. So I just use the entire image, flipped it vertically, and put a directional blur on it and uh, make it look like a, it's the actual reflection from the from the from the railing and um, again darkening the bottom a bit because I don't want to really see some ground it's supposed to be an endless abyss same deal on this puddle I take the entire image I flip it transform it I'm looking for a nice reflection from my entire image and uh, trying to integrate it into the into the actual ground because uh, we want to make it look that this puddle is actually in the ground. So I think this kind of detail is really fun, you know, drawing some reflections, painting in some shadows and uh, the, 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 the haze will make it feel it's, it's there. So uh, just breaking up here and there, and now it's really like detailing. It's really the fun part where you think like, "Oh, what can I add? Where can I add some detail? Where can I um, put in some nice, uh, some nice painted detail?" So I took this image now of the of a knight, um, made a quick uh, selection for it. Not supposed to be super clean because we're only going to see it in the background, and with the defringe com you know, uh, command, I just quickly. Uh, uh, get rid of the white outline. I uh, cut it into two pieces so I can adjust the position. So it's actually he looks like he uh, he's leaning onto the railing. Um, obviously, I don't want to make him too prominent because he's supposed to be a, a prop and not a part of the story. So, uh, but um, it's nice to have him here. I don't know if he if he died there just because of the battle or he's just you know. An empty, uh, empty shell, and nobody's in there. No, uh, I added an arrow, so he probably died there. And also adding, adding uh, vines uh, around the throne as well. I don't want to 
change too much in this area because I'm really happy what I got from the Grow Ivy stuff and uh, the, uh, the 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 masks obviously help a lot of you know isolating stuff as well because now I felt like this bridge I can't really read it so I'm quickly use my masks for uh, for getting a getting a mask for the bridge against the, the background pillars so I can just slightly very very you know low opacity highs put in between those layers to uh, to break them apart and again I'm I'm playing more and more with the idea of you know the fog and the humid humidity of the environment so uh, and every good painting needs a waterfall so I thought hey let's let's add a waterfall that is actually flowing from the bridge um, down into the abyss so it's like a very thin waterfall that you know just resolves into 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 haze while it's falling down so I broke another you know area up another area of this uh, railing of the bridge make it look like there's actually a, a, a way that the the waterfall can fall down and obviously we need another puddle that uh, that is feeding the waterfall so uh, I'm using the same technique I did before, just copy, replacing it, putting in some uh, reflection, some shadows from the from the from the lances, and I'm just using the uh, the lasso tool to uh, to to break up the the outline and uh, make sure my my elements still remain 3D even though. So I'm now using this image warping it into perspective obviously i'm only interested in in uh, in, a, in a small section of the image and i still feel like it's uh, it's probably way too much so in the end i'm going to i'm going to put a lot of uh, i'm going to paint a lot on top of it uh, to uh, to get the the look i want and i have this idea that it catches just a bit of a highlight when it falls down so actually I, I ended up painting pretty much the entire thing from scratch but I used you know a tiny bit of texture in the middle section of it and uh, erased a lot of it because I really um, just want to have a small thing and uh, because every I know every pillar is in the same perspective I can just you know uh, adjust uh, the angle of the waterfall so it falls in the in the right perspective which is very handy you know there's no way to think about right, you know, wrong perspective here. It's all correct. And uh, of course, mention the colors, mention the values, and um, I don't want to make it too prominent. You're not supposed to focus on the waterfall. Always think about the environment as a supporter for the story. It should not overpower uh, the entire story. So I felt like this bright arc there, you know, it's just, you know, a super cool way of, you know, m put one dark element in front of it, make it read good. So uh, that's what I did, place another lens there. I'm really now adding detail where I think it's good to add those. Uh, add a bit of a water splashes around the waterfall, just to detail the, this area even more. And um, just tweaking some of the elements I didn't, you know, I'm really now jumping from place to place. So while I was looking for images for possible characters on the bridge, because I was not happy with the CG characters at all, I found this image and uh, this, uh, they actually included a very nice flag. And uh, so I quickly cut this out and uh, push it into into place. Uh, again, adjust the colors into a, into red color, so all the flags have pretty much the entire, you know, the same color, and they, and really play with the contrast. You want to have a nice dark contrast, you know, black and white contrast there, a dark flag against a bright background. And this uh, area, you know, around the throne felt very, very empty. So I'm trying to add a, a bit of armory here and there, which is not really working. So I abandoned that idea as well. I rather add a bit more ivy uh, because it's actually in the scene. It doesn't feel too much out of place. I don't want to now add too many elements that are not there yet before. And um, 
these flags feel a bit painted as well, so I want to avoid that they are the only element that feel painted in the end and everything else looks kind of photorealistic. So I quickly take a fabric texture and make it a lot smaller and just overlay it on top. So we, oh my, my flags are actually, they actually have a, a bit of texture, photographic texture. So I'm checking my, um, my, my composition with the Fibonacci spiral. And I know that my characters were not showing up when I look at, you know, from the distance. So I know I need a bigger character. And the only way of getting a bigger character and still stay in scale is to add a character on the horse. Uh, pretty much here. So I was thinking about adding a character on the horse. was trying it with this image, but on the other hand, I didn't work at all. So I was looking through a bunch of images and um, to find a, a good one that worked. And... Um, I finally found one from the right perspective. So, uh, uh, obviously you're more looking for uh, the right perspective than anything else, because everything else can be changed pretty pretty fast. So I'm quickly just throwing it in, uh, cutting it out, very, very rough, uh, because I know I'm going to paint on top. But now I have my, 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 uh, my, my knight there, who's discovering the, the whole of the Mountain King again, and... Uh, Obviously, starting to integrate them with adjusting the values, adjusting the colors. Obviously, needs a a, a bluish tint and uh, a few more highlights and um, a bit more. More obviously, the the horse needs to cast a shadow on the ground as well. So I paint that in as well. And um, look, going back to the source image, I really uh, like the idea of the of the flag there. Uh, so I took the flag now and put it into gave it the night now because I felt like it's it's much better much more appropriate and I was playing a bit with the colors of the night as well um, but uh, in the end I ended up with a with a reddish color again um, I wasn't too keen about the white crosses on the on the on the on the on the, uh, on the night so I quickly overpainted them and gave him a, a little, you know, a sleeping bag behind him. So he's he looks like a traveler. Here I'm trying to get a different color in the image, but in the end, you know, it doesn't work. Put in a bit of haste behind him again to make him read better, because you don't want to, you know, make him. You know, he has he's part of the story. He has to stand out. So I'm faking in the scale a tiny bit, but not too much. Still uh, felt like the brick texture was not showing up too much on the foreground and we really want to understand how this place is built so I, uh, I take another texture with a bit more highlights and uh, push it into place uh, in the foreground. Obviously not on the rock, more on the, on the, on the edge itself. Uh, also uh, breaking up a few railings here and there, a few edges that feel very, very clean, still very CG looking. Um, now I'm, I'm pretty confident that the haze level will not change, so I'm, I'm also now painting on top of the haze as well, uh, because I know it's, it's going to be fine. I'm going back to one of the render elements I rendered out, which is the atmospheric pass, because I, I know I want to change the light a tiny bit, so I'm using that one. Uh, to match it a bit, you know, change the color and match the angle a bit better to the uh, to the actual shape of the window, and uh, also give it a bit more punch. As and then I'm looking obviously at some reference uh, to get the effect I'm I'm looking for too. And uh, also thinking about adding a bit of you know dust and and stuff and raindrops and stuff like that. But I don't want to overpower that. I want to get a clean image and not you know. Put too much motion blur or stuff like that on top. Again, I'm checking my composition from time to time, and um, obviously I'm not really in the composition. I'm more thinking about a, a Dutch angle right now, but um, which would, you know, work much better. But on the other hand, I'm I'm happy with what I have now, so I don't want to change it. And not every image has to be perfectly, uh, you know, constructed by the rule of third. 
Uh, so uh, now I'm going back to the uh, to the foreground ivy and uh, clean that up. Uh, and obviously this is just you know round brush going in, fixing the edges, fixing the uh, the, the the steppiness of the render, anti-aliasing problems, whatever. And also adding a few branches here and there to make it look more natural, just because um, we can. And they actually stand out so nice against the uh, against the uh, against the haze. So you have to think about how this stuff grows and how it connects, and that's that's a lot of fun, drawing stuff like that. But this is. Um, now the image, playing a bit with the contrast, because I I might want to adjust some stuff. Um, putting a bit of glow in there, again mirroring the image helps to to get a new perspective on the uh, on the image itself. And uh, I'm also gonna put a high pass sharpen on it, scale it down to uh, HD resolution, and uh, the only thing that uh, I'm missing is uh, is a bit of um, shadowing on the on the left side. So I I want to add a little bit of uh, vignetting on the left side, which I did, and uh, which I did which I do now with exposure exposure node. Uh, just darkening it a tiny bit, just to make sure. Uh, our eye is actually going into the into the center and not focusing too much on the edge of the of the frame, which can be a bit distracting, and we don't want to do that. So, again, environment is here to support the story, and even though this is showcasing the environment and this, the main purpose of this concept is to establish the environment, uh, is to make it work with the story because a good environment always works works with the story, and. Um, so we scale it down, we can save it out and um, um, have a have a have a have an image like that. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this workflow. I showed you pretty much the entire production workflow of this image um, from start to finish um, from the initial sketch, very rough. A lot of things changed, a lot of things stayed the same. Uh, we have a nice, uh, you know, nice details in this uh, in this painting, and uh, I uh, had a lot of fun doing that. I hope you learned a few things. Uh, it was probably not the most in, you know, in tec technical tutorial. It was not about you know you have to push this button, but I really believe uh, that uh, you know doing this kind of stuff is not pushing buttons. It's more about creative decisions you have to do on a, you know, for every painting, individually. Uh, thank you very much again, and uh, have a good day.